Morning everyone, how are you today? Wasn't going to, uh, I, I didn't think I'll be able to make it this morning, but here we are. I've uh, been rather rather busy for the last few days and it is this afternoon at four o'clock, the Half Yard Sewing Club Sew Along. So that's going to be only on Half Yard Sewing Club um, website. So it won't be on Facebook, won't be on, uh, won't be on YouTube, that will only be on the Half Yard Sewing Club website. So it's a good time to join. We're going to have some giveaways this afternoon. I'm not sure what yet, but I thought we'd, we'd, um, we'd, just, we'd just do some random giveaways. No quiz, no questions, no, no nothing like that, just a few giveaways. Uh, morning Claire, morning June, um, morning Sarah, Margaret, Joanne, Janet, um, Valinda, hello, hello to Jules, Laura, hello, who else have I missed, Christine, Janet, first one in, hello, and Debbie and Anne-Marie, oh hi Blodwin, very good, thank you. Um, Tina's in, is it Vero or Vero Beach in Florida, oh how lovely, uh, hi Karen, Susan, Angela, another Angela, and Jackie, and another, another Sandra, and Laverne, and Sheila, and Jane, and Anne's in Cyprus, hello. Um, just a quick one today, really. Oh, hi, Alan. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I, I, we've got some new Tilda fabric, and I thought, I, I just fancy making a little, I'm going to make a little heart-shaped purse. I know you, you might have seen one before, because I made them ages ago, but I just thought it lent itself to that, and I just wanted a nice quick project, and maybe something that could be a secret Santa or a stocking filler, and I'm thinking my uh, my granddaughters might quite like that to keep bits and bobs in as well. Hi, Linda. Hi, Diane. Cold enough, but it's freezing here, so it was all frosty outside this morning. Couldn't you get the chickens to come out in the garden first thing. Hi Ruby. Hello Coco. Um, a very sunny in Loch Lomond says Mary. Lovely. It's sunny. Looks nice. Just freezing. Freezing out there. Hi Sue. Hola says Carol in Spain. Hi Sylvia. Yes yeah, so that's what I'm going to make. So I haven't got a ton of new fabrics to show you. Um, I have got a little friend here that I think I showed you last week, but I'm going to show you again because I need to make a dress for her. I'm sorry, another nighty for her because she's got a mate, but her mate is naked. Um, so I'm going to be videoing. This is your project for next week. A bit late. Um, she's uh, best friends with PJ, who is behind me here. So very similar in body shape, different heads, different ears, different clothes. And she's she's a rabbit. She's not a mouse. So that's next week's project. So there will be video for this because it's the main one and there will be a video for a little mop cap and her nighty as well. So so you will be dressed later on, Pip. Don't worry, we will dress you later on. Um, so that's what we're doing later on today. And um, I don't know what projects are coming back, Alan. Um, uh, it's, it's also because I didn't do the admin on the website, so that's not down to me. So it's a nice surprise for me when they come back as well. I'm not normally told about things like that. <laughs> Um, hello from um, Northern Queensland in Australia, Samantha. Hello to you. Hello, Rain. She's lovely, isn't she, Sarah? She's re I'm really, really pleased with her. She's got a look. She's got a little opening at the back of a nighty, so a little tail can stick out. I think she's very sweet. Yep, so that's next week's project. And the sew along this afternoon, I'm going to need to be a club member. I'm going to make one block um, from the table runner, which was last month's secondary project so i'm not making anything out of the block we're just going to cut out all the pieces so if you wanted to sew along with me then do have a look at all of the measurements and everything that you need just for one block and um, and we'll do that this afternoon so if, if you want to cut out your squares already then that would be a, a jolly good idea but we'll, we'll start from scratch this afternoon hello lavina and steph she's steph loves her hello morning to you irene um hi sue alicia hi chris had a better journey today we did just six hours in a traffic jam. Oh no! Six hours. Oh, I, I have had a six hour journey before, and I was talking about this with the boys yesterday actually. Um, on my journey to, as it was, Hachanda when I was working there once, which is about a 40 minute journey, and it, it was a diesel spillage, which they take very seriously. And it was the same morning that uh, Tyler went on holiday to Lanzarote. We left at the same time, and he landed in Lanzarote before I even got to work. Um, that's so dull. He's, he's in Mexico at the moment, so I took him down to Gatwick Airport with his, uh, with his mates yesterday. And I know they've landed, so hopefully they're gonna have a lovely time. And have lovely weather while they're out there as well. Um, it's sunny in Tenerife, says Fiona. Lovely. Sanders in Canada. Hello. Um, oh, lovely. Thank you, Alan. And uh, Murphy. Oh, what a lovely name. Is watching from Puerto Rico. Hello. Uh, 
Right, I just want to show you one thing. I'll show you the tilde fabrics we've got actually because I don't think I've shown you those before. Um, but I've taken some stock back from Clayton Craft of the Oriental bag kits. I haven't actually got the bag here because it's over at the office. But it's the one that has the plaited rope handle and it's the Oriental fabric. So there's enough fabric in here to make the bag. It's quite a big bag and the purse. So you get the lining, you get two magnetic snaps, you've got the handle, you've got the wadding um, and of course the outer fabric as well. And there's all your patterns inside here and your full instructions as well. But we don't have very many. It's a, it's a little stock that I've taken back from them and I've taken five pounds off the price as well. Um, pink trimming little fabric looks like it might need some lining for it. Any recommendations? Depends what you're making for. If you're making, if you're dressmaking, Nicole, I'd, I'd maybe just use a cotton or a poly cotton. I think that would be absolutely fine. If you're making a bag, then a quilted quilt weight of cotton would be would be fine for that. I think. Um, there's Mar Oh, hello, Marilyn. Oh, first time here. Welcome along. Hopefully, it won't be your last. Um, right. Let me show you the fabrics that I'm going to use because these are lovely. Lovely. So these are all Tilda. And I'm going to make my purse out of this one. And I'm using magenta as the lining because it just goes so well. And I happen to have found a zip that isn't isn't too far off. So that's what I'm going to make my project with. But I'll just show you the other two Tilda fabrics while I'm here as well. I can't remember what they're called. But they are under new arrivals and featured products. I love the colour of this one and I found a rather nice ochre which goes really well with it and actually that goes well with all of the squirrels on that I'm going to use. And also that's the other one. I've only got the three of the Tildes. This goes really well with the sea foam. This sea foam colour seems to just go with so many different things. But yeah, that goes that goes really well. I mean, the magenta goes with it as well. I wouldn't do magenta with that one, as you can see there. Magenta goes really well with it. And a peach would actually look really good as well. But I think that one is, that, that that's the one that I'd, I'd go for with that one if you were choosing a lining or a, or a trim or a contrast fabric. That would be my choice. Um, Right, so let's just pop those out of the way. Got a feeling I've wafted something on the floor there. No doubt find out when I when I can't find it. So who's going to be sewing along this afternoon then? And who who's new who we're going to be tempted to become a new member so you can come and join us when we're sewing this afternoon? That's that's the peach. Is that the peach? That goes really, that goes better than I expected to actually. It's have written on there. Yeah, that's the Rose and Hubble peach fabric. That goes really nice. It's a, practically the same colour look as the leaf there. And doesn't it change the look of the fabric when you change the contrast that goes with it? Yeah, there we go. Anyway, um, so that's that. So let me put those back to one side. And the first thing we need to do is to make our template. Um, and it's four o'clock this afternoon. Our blog one's going to be watching lovely. Yeah, four o'clock. So I'm thinking I've got an A4 piece of copy paper. And that's going to be around about the size of my bag. Um, make them as big or as small as you like. They make nice little coin purses if you make them smaller. Um, or if you... Um, if you have some of those earbuds and you want to put those in, that's a nice one. Oh, well, Pamela's going to be there. Alana will be there. Charlotte, it's four o'clock this afternoon, only on the Half Yard Sewing Club website. Let me let me take you over there rather quickly. Because if you do want to join up... Oops, where's my keyboard? Um, this is where you're going to go. So if I just go on to... Mm -mm -mm, haven't got it open. Bear with me just a sec. And I'll show you. So let me just sign in. And we'll see what you've been making as well while we're here. Here we go. Then so this is the Debbie Shaw Sewing. Uh, sorry, it's not. No, it's not. It's a Half Yard Sewing Club website. Um, that's me signed in. And there's the wreath, which is one of the recent projects. 
and this is the table runner now this is a secondary project so there's no video to go with this one um so i thought it might help a little bit oh nobody's just put a picture on there yet um nobody's uh sorry i thought it might help to just put one of the blocks together so we're just going to sew that that much there i'm not going to put the border around it but just a bit with the half square triangles in it so if you want to come and join us it's five pounds 99 a month see who's been making wreaths or it's 60 pounds for a year we've been going for five years now and these are your projects um we haven't put the price up yet the price may go up next year but I've been promised that for another year, um, these are fabulous, aren't they? For another year, they're going to keep these at the same price. So £5.99 a month, or however that translates in your currency, because you can be anywhere in the world, or £60 for the year. And you will have access to two years' worth of projects. So if we just go to sewing projects, the first day that you join, so if you join now, you can sew along with us this afternoon or just watch the live and, and maybe win something. And these are all of the projects that you're going to have access to today. There'll be at least 48 of them. And they will be anything from, got a block of the month, got Maddie there, bag making, quilting, toy making, homewares. So that's the same machine cover with the wonky strip that you got a bum bag. There's lots of storage on there. It could be a bit of dressmaking, curtains, cushion covers hot water bottle covers and there's so many different techniques that you can use as well so maybe you'll learn something new while you're there as well so all of the you get all of this all of this for five pounds 99 today i think it's incredible value it could be you'd pay more than five pounds 99 for one pattern and one project there's at least 48 here on top of the 48 projects there will be your block of the month this is made by my friend melissa and um they're different every year as well. They don't get taken down after two years like everything else does. So you'll be able to make the block of the month from five years ago, if that's what you wanted to do. And we do bring back some of the projects after two years as well. But that's basically the whole two years worth of projects, plus your extras. I'm still going. You get, you get all of these on day one. They're right, right back down to the beginning, um, just for your £5.99. So if you wanted to join now, then do feel free. Anywhere in the world, everything is um, downloadable, so we don't post anything out. So um, that would be very expensive. So you can be anywhere you like in the world. Two projects a month. Hello, Jennifer in Australia, and Marilyn's in Wales. Um, what's the best way to transfer a pattern from the embroidered felt heart onto the felt? Maybe Alana using um, a transfer paper and carbon paper, that would work well. Or if you can hold it up to a, a sunny window like we are now, you can maybe just trace it um, straight through the felt with um, an erasable marker pen. Uh, Sarah says, if you're thinking of joining, do it. Great club, amazing value for money, beautiful projects and a super sewing family always ready to help. Oh, there's a forum on there as well. So you can have a chat with each other. Um, if I don't get to answer your questions, it'll be one of the girls um, from the Half Yard Sewing Club or one of you will answer each other's questions. You can share pictures on there. Um, oh, the dressmaking projects don't get taken down either. Yes, Laura, thank you. And Maddie doesn't get taken down. Um, so there's a lot, there's, there's, there's more than 40, there's more than two years worth of projects on there. Um, Who's it? Oh, Boogie. Oh, Boogie the Schnooky. <laughs> Hello to you. Right, should, should we make this purse? Um, oh, really quickly. Vicky Farley, if I can't watch the show along this afternoon, will it be available on the website as a catch up? Yes, it will be. Um, the comments, uh, they can't figure out how, how to keep the comments at the moment, but the videos will still be there. So if you go, was it there then? Hmm, on the home page. There should be a countdown on there. Let me have a look. Let's go back to the top and back here. There we go. So next live in four hours and 42 minutes. That's this afternoon at uh, four o'clock GMT. So just watch, watch, watch out for that because the picture here will uh, change to this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the videos are stored. Let Laura all know. Where's the video stored? Is it under the blog, maybe? Oh, I can't see where it is. We haven't, we've only done one before. Um, 
maybe it was further further along than that i'll find out i'll find out where they are and where it'll be stored as well um hello pam right let's do this so you may have seen me do this before uh, it's the easiest way to make a heart i think ever so i folded my paper in half and it's just an a4 piece of copy paper and i've got a circle template this is about four inches across and i'm just going to overlap it a little bit so i've got a nice point in here this is going to be the center of my heart and we'll draw around this let's do that quite close to the top like that and then take a ruler and join that to there so that's that's my half heart i'm half hearted and i'm going to be in trouble but these are the only scissors i've got handy i don't think cutting through paper once is really going to affect them so it's going to be quite a nice size part this because i'm cutting it out in paper first if i'm not keen on the shape then i can i can change it see i think that's a bit wide for a purse so i'm going to trim the curve back a little bit make it a little bit narrower I think that's a lot better. So that's what we're going to go with. Oh, Karen, I'm so sorry. Oh, I hope you're okay. Uh, acquired the tiniest puppy ever that one was due to collect the day she died. Oh, how sweet. Oh, Karen. Oh, thinking of you. Um, videos are sorted under the blog. Oh, thank you, Sarah. They are under the blog. Uh, stored under the blog, sorry. Uh, hello Linda, I had last year's subscriptions, it was a Christmas present, enjoyed it so much, I requested it again this year. Oh thank you, yes, because we, we do do, we do do, um, gift vouchers uh, for the Half Yard Sewing Club, and those are on the home page, if I scoop that over there, I'll show you, I'll show you, let's go back again, I'm going to log out. So if, you, if you're not a member, in a minute, come on this is what it looks like so you can become a member by signing here uh, by clicking there you can join today here but underneath here you can buy a gift subscription you don't need to be a club member to do that so you can go for three months for 1750 six months for 33 or a year for 60 pounds and just go through and fill all the forms in so and even if you're not a member this is me telling you all about it and you can still take a look at what the projects are. So if you're not sure, you don't have to pay your £5.99 and then decide. Um, you can have a look at the Ask a Member, which is a forum. You can't join in. You can't see the... Um, you can't answer anything. Um, it'll all come up blank like this because it's members only. But again, it gives you an idea of, of what, what these are. You can have a look at the books that are available. And um, I've got anything coming up. No, they haven't, put the, they haven't put the ones that are coming out next year on there yet. But you get 30% discount on any of my books. If you just click on the link, it'll take you to the Search Press website and give you 30% off. So there's lots of special offers on there as well. Um, don't think you can read the articles on the blog without being a member. But again, you can have a look what it's all about. You can see what the tips and techniques are, although you can't actually use the tips and techniques until you join in. But if you wanted to pop over and have a look at the website and see what you think and see if it's for you before you decide then you don't have to commit straight away um 49 years for a furnace and it's only just broken down wow that's good going isn't it things like that don't last anywhere near these days right now then i need to cut two outer pieces and two lining pieces and i'm going to put some fusible fleece on the wrong side so the first thing I'm going to do is to put the fleece on because I find it easier to add my fleece while the fabric's square than trying to iron it to a heart shape. So I'm just going to plug my iron in. Uh, Anne's asking for a subscription too. It's easier than posting a parcel to Cyprus. That might get there in a month or two. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to get hold. Of, oh, this is uh, Jeannie. 
been trying to get hold of oh hang on, hang on, hang on. the beach hurt fabric is there any chance of it coming back even a remnant i made the bag hmm do we not have beach hurt fabric the panels is it the panels because we've got some i'll have a look um over at the office later on today or kim will be there anyway so i'll get to see how many we've got and put some back in stock again for you so watch out if you go on the waiting list so let, let me show you this one as well we'll get we'll do some sewing in a minute um so let's go on to our website which is here and i'll type in beach it should come up a c h See, oh no, we've got the we've got the beach that's there in stock, um, and those are the other beachy fabrics. So yeah, we do we do have them. We do have them there right now. I thought that was a bit strange, isn't it? We we got some. Right. Um, oh, the Liberty Beach fabric. Um, we not got any of that. Hang on, hang on a minute. Let me have a look. Um, Liberty. Let's have a look at Liberty. With the line in moment just bring it up here that would be a jolly sight easy wouldn't it liberty if that's sold out we can't get any more um no i'm afraid not I can, no, I know we haven't got any more at the office. If it's the Liberty one, I'm sorry. We No, we can't get hold of any more of that one. Um, you may find some other retailers that have got it. I'm not sure. A chrysanthemum panel or two anywhere. Not sure, Irene. I'm not sure. I shall have a look. You never, you never know. Um, we've been having a bit of a tidy up because we're having an open day tomorrow, so... I think I remember seeing one. I can't remember. I shall let you know. Um, who's getting a new puppy on the 23rd? Oh, envious. Hello, Lisa. You all right? Uh, wool warehouse or on Etsy shops, says Laura. That might help. Right, so I'm just using H630. I don't want it to be too... Is that wide enough? Yep. Yep, just don't want it to be too thick. So I'll just iron that onto the wrong side of my fabric. Bit of steam, bit of heat. Oh, now then, just to let you know as well, while I'm just doing that, on the, I think it's 28th, I shall, I'll, I'll try and put a post on the website at some point. It's the Sunday, I think it's the last Sunday of the month. In January, um, going to be doing a workshop with um, uh, Susie Duncan, and it will be a quilt as you go June Taylor bag. It'll be in a kit, and um, okay, and it'll probably be a little bit of fabric. I need to choose the fabric for it first of all. But I just wanted to let you know because I've had a lot of interest in it without even showing you what it is. So I'll um, I'll get the fabrics put together as soon as I can and show you a picture of what the bag will look like. We haven't made it up yet, but just in case you you don't want to miss it because we'll only have 10 places. And we've got 10, enough room for 10 sewing machines at the moment. But um, I'll post about that later. I know Irene's coming. It's a squirrel. It is, yes, Sylvia. It's Tilda fabric. It's got squirrels on it. It's called Squirrel Dreams because they're fast asleep and they're very cute. Uh, right. Who was that? So I'm missing all these comments. Um, the Tilda hibernation range, yeah. Connected for the first time from. Alcester, where's that one? I miss the rest. Miss the rest of your message there. I've only got from from Deborah. Hello, welcome along. Come along for the first time. 
I don't know what he's done with it today, Lisa. Must must be there somewhere. Must be a mouse on the set, so I can see it. I can see it. She's definitely there. Right. So let's place the template over the top of here. And I'm just going to draw around the edge. Just make sure that it is actually on the... Oops. On the H630. That'll do. I'm going to make a nice little bag, this one. I have to make two, though. One for each granddaughter. Mind you, I'll have to make three, because you just know the grandson's going to want one as well. Um, I can barely see that. Let's cut that out. And then I'll need to cut another from outer fabric with a wadding and another from lining fabric. So I've just, just lost the mark there a little bit. That's it. Should have gone a bit heavy with the pen. There we go. And I'll use that one as a template for this one. I find it easier to draw around paper than cut around it. But fabric's OK because it, it moves with the fabric that's underneath it. So that's why I do it that way. Now, if you're just making heart ornaments, then this with a little bit of stuffing inside it would make a, a nice size one. I would join two pieces of fabric together before uh, I cut them out, though, just so that I've got a seam down the back, because that would be where I stuff it from. So that's that. And then two from lining. is not quite accurate. And then, is that the Crafter's Companion heart template? Probably would, Blodwin. Let's do another one here. And that's through both layers. So we come in as well, Sarah. I should, I'd absolutely, I'll take two places off when I advertise it then. Um, it's quite a it's quite a big bag, so I haven't actually got one made up. I'll show you a picture of it um, on Wednesday, when hopefully we'll have decided what fabric's going to go with it as well. So there'll be two two choices of colours and everything that you need in the kit. And if you haven't seen the quilt as you go before, it's um, the wadding that June Taylor does is printed with the design on it. So um, so it's really easy, Just it's like a stitch and flip, but it creates like a flying geese effect down the centre of it, so it's quite effective. Okay, that's that. So let's move that out of the way, that out of the way, that out of the way. So I'm going to take one outer piece and one lining piece and chop these in half. So decide which way you want the zip to go. I'm going to have mine diagonally from one side to there and I'll draw a line across there. So I'm not measuring particularly, just where I think it's going to look good. So somewhere across the middle and then we'll cut this in half. So through both of the outer and of the lining. So that's where the zip's going to go. So that's the first thing that we'll do. 56 degrees in Florida. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. No, I didn't make this one, Kathy. I'd, I'd love to have time for dressmaking. Right. So let's put the zip in. So the zip's going to go. Let's do the outer fabric first. In between the two pieces facing down. So the zip's a bit longer than the... Um, in the fabric just so I can keep everything out of the way while I'm sewing it. So I'll move the needle over to the left so I don't need to put my zipper foot on and <laughs> find my foot pedal. 
There you are. Oh, no, you're not. Come here. It's wandered off and gone upside down somewhere. Do bear with me a moment. <laughs> While we do that, sorry about that noise. There we go. So right down the centre of the zip tape. And then the second half of the heart will go facing down on the other side and just try and make sure that the ends line up. Mm, I'll do it from the zip side, that's easier. So the ends of the fabric are matching. What's that? A bit awkward with it being a, a diagonal cut. But we can always trim it down a little bit more if necessary, if it doesn't fit perfectly. It's that one. Oh, it. So that's how we look in there. And then the lining goes on the opposite side. So just make sure I've got these the right way round. Because with it being a lining, it's easy to get it you know, because it's it doesn't have a right and wrong side. So just make sure that you've mirror imaged the piece that you've just put on. And that's going on the opposite side of the zip. So the zip is sandwiched in between the two pieces. So I've got that. And then the second piece of the lining is going to go under here. Yeah, just make sure you've got it the right way around. Whoops, flip it over. And sew along that side. Then I'm just getting the ironing board back up again. Whoops. And we'll press this open. Like so, then I'm going to top stitch along each side of the zip. So I've only got um, a grey thread on my machine, but I think a pale blue would have looked quite nice as top stitching. So there we go, that's nice and flat. And so along each side, then we'll trim the zip back. Um, so I've just, I've just lost my... <laughs> there we go. Just lost myself a moment. So I'm going to put the needle back in the centre again. And just sew along each side of the seam. And the same on that side. And then I can cut. The ends of the zip away. Make sure that this one is open and cut. And then I'm just going to sew the ends of the zip together. Holly leaf would be a great idea, Alice. That would be really good. So I've got that. It's pulled away a little bit. So do you know what? I don't know why that's happened. I'm going to trim it so that it's... so that the lining's the same. I'm just going to trim that back. Things move sometimes, don't they, when you're sewing? That's better. 
and I'm going to do the same with that bit. Just around that curve. And um, that seems to have slipped as I was sewing, but, but it slips away from the seam allowance. And I, I don't want to see that on the inside. So I've just trimmed that back. So it's symmetrical. Just make that straight. There. That's better. Now I'm going to make a little loop just to use as a wrist lesson, a wrist, a wristlet. And that's going to go around the end here. So let's cut a piece of fabric, just make that straight and that's going to measure maybe three inches wide by four and a half inches long. And then, oops, just make the end of that straight. Measure that. Measure that as you're doing it. I'm just kind of doing it by eye. It doesn't have to be set in stone to be the exact size, but three by four and a half will be fine. And then let's fold to the center. So it's like making a piece of bias binding. And then to the center here. Do you know, Leslie, I haven't even opened the box yet. <laughs> I haven't had, I literally haven't had time to, um, to do it. We've been so busy recently to the center. Yes, everything's getting a little bit behind. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's a shame. It's a the cover stitch machine was for me to do projects for me and you know, maybe do a bit more dressmaking and hopefully Kim is going to be able to, well, Kim will be able to use it, of course, as well. And some and her time. So I'm just sewing along each edge of this to make a nice piece of tape. And this one, I'm gonna fold in half and just sew facing inwards to one end of the zip or the top end of the zip. Hello, Michelle in Brisbane in Australia. I have a feeling, you know, when I, I lost my mic last week and I had to reset everything because I updated the software. Um, at the time you're using cover. Oh, dear Teresa, that's not good. Um, and as I was tweaking all of the settings, there was a setting to cut down on background noise. So it's made my mic very sensitive to what I'm actually talking about. But hopefully you're not going to hear planes going over, birds on the roof, chickens squawking outside, dogs barking, church bells ringing, all of that kind of thing I've taken down. And I have a feeling it's taken the same machine sound as background noise and quietened it down. But that's not a bad thing, is it? That's not a bad thing. Um, watching while knitting wrist rooms. Oh, how lovely, Ginny. Right. Now we're going to put the two outer pieces right sides together. Remember I have trimmed this slightly so I'm going to sew from the trimmed side. In fact, no, let's, let's make it the same shape. That's going to be easy when we put the lining on. So I just trimmed that down a little. As long as it's symmetrical that's not an issue. Let's do that. And I'm going to sew these through all of the layers just on a straight piece down here just on that bit line there okay and then the lining I'm going to pop that face down over the top here and I might, well I will, put a couple of pins in there. Oh, actually, I actually never thought about that, Steph. <laughs> never thought about that. I'll have a play with it and I'll tweak it when I've got time. Right, and then from this side I'm going to sew from where I've stitched here, I'm overlap it a little bit and go all the way around and finish up here. So I've got a gap here and that's going to be my turning gap. The pattern's asking for a ballpoint needle and I've got a universe, will it be okay to use? 
Oh, Nicole, did, uh, mm, depends what you're doing. Ballpoint needles are designed for jersey fabric, so I'm assuming you're sewing something stretch. Try a spare piece of fabric. So do a test with a universal needle on a spare piece of fabric and just see what happens. Um, a universal needle has a rounded point to it. So with knitted fabrics, quick tip, when you get into the point, a couple of stitches across. Um, if you've got a knitted fabric, a ballpoint needle will part the threads instead of slicing through them because there's a risk if you use a very sharp needle that it'll cut through the threads and your fabric could ladder. Um, I don't always change to a ballpoint needle but try a universal and just see what happens if it works. If you see that the stitches are puckering a little bit or they look tight or you get uneven stitches or you're tearing the fabric then go buy yourself a, ball, a ballpoint needle. I think that's the, the, the best advice to offer there. Um, so he likes to hear the sewing machine. The thing is I can't, I can hear the sewing machine so I'll play it back later on and see what it's like. Um, crossbody bags from YouTube. To, oh nice Lorraine! Right. Cut. Down. Cut. I want to start sewing again so therapy could have struggled since. Oh! Oh no Anna. Oh thinking of you. Right, let's trim this down a little bit and snip off there, snip off there. I'm going to trim the seams back a little bit around the curves. You could use pink in shears here if you wanted to do, just to make that a little less bulky. When I get to the point, I'm cutting up to the stitches there and then let's trim the seams back here again as well. So just make, oh, that's the zip. Just make it a little less bulky when I turn it the right side out. So out comes the pin, mess in the bin. And let's turn it through and see what happens. All right, so let's pull this all out. Barbara like silent sewing. Okay, so let's Push that out there. And that's inside out, so you've got a nice neat edge all the way around. And then a turning up. I shan't sew it closed now, but I would do that by hand. And the reason being, if I was to, like you would with the handbag lining, if you were to fold both ends over and then sew across with your sewing machine, then you're going to affect the shape of the bag, so it'll sew through all of the seams. So I would and so just catching along the edge of the stitches that you've already made there and then when you turn this the right side out you've got a lovely little bag so I'll give that a final press take that off Let's push that point out. And again, it's something you can make in any shape or size, really. I've made, um, if you have a look at my YouTube channel, there is a, a circle bag made in practically the same way. But by doing that little row of stitches first without the lining fabric, just means that, again, you get a really nice seam, a solid seam all the way around the edge. So there's no turning gap or anything it gives it a nice clean line and it's very simple to do so it looks professional as well i think there we go so that's that now with a maybe a bigger size or even with this size no reason why you couldn't put a smaller tab on the one end another tab on this side about here with maybe a little d-ring in them and then you can attach a chain strap and then you've got a little evening bag but that would make a nice, um, let's say, coin purse somewhere just to keep maybe fabric clips. And if you're thinking about Christmas presents, a smaller gift inside there. If you're giving a gift to somebody who sews, then something like fabric clips or quick and picks or small pairs of scissors and this kind of thing would make a really nice gift inside something that you've made yourself already. So that's really easy and quick to do. As you can see, that was right from the beginning. And that was 45 minutes with chat and looking at the website in between. So it's a nice, nice quick make for you there. Um, I, was, I was going to tell you something that I can't remember at all there. 
What was I talking? What was I talking about? What was I talking about there? Can't remember. Can't remember at all. Um, do you have any tips, please, using faux leather? It's pocket a bit. Um, a longer stitch, Sheena. A longer stitch with um, with faux leather. You'll need a walking foot or um, a Teflon or non-stick foot. That's really important because your regular foot will cause friction between the leather and the foot. It'll stick to it. So your feed dogs will be feeding the fabric through at a quicker rate than the tops let in it. And that may be why the stitches pucker. Um, you could try loosening the tension slightly. I don't normally ever recommend touching the tension, but you could try loosening it slightly. But always use a longer stitch when you're sewing faux leather. So hopefully that will help. Oh, somebody asked a question. Sorry, I missed, I missed what your name was. And it was about your fabric disappearing into the into your machine. Um, if you have a straight stitch machine that doesn't happen but um, basically where your feed dogs are here sometimes when you start sewing let me get a scrap of fabric and see if I can make it happen if you start sewing right at the edge of your fabric then it um, it could disappear particularly if you've got a pointy bit like that Let's see what happens here no, it's done it. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But it's basically the end of the fabric just dropping down into the gap underneath there. So ways that you can prevent that is either let me just sew a little, a little, a few stitches. Not using your thread snipper if you have one. And so I just get my needle. Up. There you go. Hope you come. Hope you get all these buttons. And when you start sewing, whoops, right on the edge of your fabric. Just get into the habit of when you put your foot down, taking hold of the two threads that you've already got at the back there. And as you start to sew, just gently pull the fabric through. Don't pull it so it distorts the stitches, but hold on to the edge of your fabric as you pull that through. And that'll stop it disappearing into the end. The other thing that you could do is to make a thread catcher, which is basically a scrap of fabric. And when you start sewing your project, sew a few stitches on your thread cutter first. And then, so let me just cut in a piece of fabric to show you. Let's just snip and snip. And then when you start to sew your actual project, line that up to the edge. And it works in the same way. So the scrap piece of fabric that you had here has caught hold of the thread and that's pulling it through. So that's a, that's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, oh, another thing that you could use, I don't have any here, is a piece of tearaway stabiliser. So put your stabiliser just underneath the edge of your fabric as you start to sew, and sew over both of them, then rip the stabiliser away. That'll stop it um, going down in there. Uh, Bob says, using faux leather, I sandwiched it between silicon and kitchen paper and it works a treat. Paper rips off easy. That's a good idea, Bob, because that's effectively working in the way the same way as a non-stick foot, isn't it? It just makes it, makes it glide underneath the foot. Uh, Linda says, tissue paper helps as well. Thank you. Um, right. OK, so that's it. that for now. So I'm going to get off and I shall see you again if you're a Half Yard Club member, at four o'clock this afternoon. So we'll make up one of the blocks from the table runner behind me. Have a look at all of your instructions on there. And if you want to cut out the squares, first of all, then that's going to be helpful. So you'll need your rotary cutter, ruler, and that. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, so you could have a glass of wine with you if you're not bothered about sewing straight. Get yourself a cup of tea, and um, we'll have uh, we'll have some giveaways as well. I'm going to sort out some, some things for you now that we can give away this afternoon. I might finish that off, and that could be one of them as well, has that? Um, so again, if you're not a member of the Half Yard Club, go and join up now. It's only £5.99. You've got at least 48 projects there. And join us again this afternoon at four o'clock. Right, let me just um, pop this over there and do that there. Otherwise, if I don't see you then, I shall see you again here next Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm going to see a lot of you tomorrow on our open day, hopefully. And otherwise, I shall see you next Wednesday at four. Bye-bye.